<laughs> well, Jim, it's quite another predictable afternoon here in the Damon Dominique household. Yes, Pat, I think you are correct. Right on brand for someone who is simply not interested in cooking. Wait, wait, wait ex excuse us for this interruption. We are now just getting word that to fit Damon Dominique making his triumphant return to the kitchen. If you are watching this from home, you are right there with us. If this is one for the books, my friends. Damon Dominique making history. <laughs> Wow. Well, you better believe, Pat, that the media will be well on this one. It, it, it appears that Damon Dominique will be making an announcement. Time can never be. That's enough. All right, so here's the deal. My name's Damon Dominique, and I don't enjoy cooking. Like, I'm not a bad cook. I'm just a lazy cook. I just don't want to cook. Um, so don't ask me to come to your friend's giving, having had made some Brussels sprouts. I'm not going to make... A buffalo dip or potato salad for the cookout like in nor do you want me to if it requires me being anywhere near the stove just somebody please move the fire alarm because I will burn whatever's on the stove and I am here in my kitchen in Paris if you have noticed this is all I have there is no stove there is no microwave there's no toaster no dishwasher but I got a dead rose that I just chipped right now. Oh, oh, ah. oh my god. Oh, oh shit, I forgot. Ah. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Now, I am making this video because it did win on a poll on my Instagram story, which means that you too probably are a bad cook, or maybe you just want something to eat. I don't know, I'm currently hungry. We're all hungry. You hungry? All right, let's go ahead and cook. And I'm, I'm seriously moving the fire alarm. Now, let me start this video by letting you in on a little secret of mine. The one appliance that you might want to invest in as a lazy cook, the bullet. You can make some mean smoothies within like two minutes. Let's do it. We're gonna start off with some cheap oat milk. For your smoothie to get that good consistency, you need something to get it big, get it quick. But I also like to add oats. Just the cheapest kind of oats. I have smoothies maybe two or three times a day, and I always like to just add a little jar um, of protein powder. So let's go ahead and add some of this. Just one scoop. Just a tiny jar. If you like chunks in your smoothies like I do, just like something to chew on and <laughs> if you want something else to like chew as you <laughs> Okay, so you gotta take the date out then you throw the date in. So I just added some spirulina, and I feel like if you look at the back of this bag, in addition to all the other bags of like organic powders, they all kind of say the same thing, which is like rich in protein and source of natural vitamins. And we will now cap, shake. And here we have our smoothie. See now, most people would probably transfer this to like a nice glass. But to me, that's just, then we have two things to wash. And I think that's probably the reason why I don't enjoy cooking in the first place. And it'll kind of look like um, dirty sewer water. <laughs> Delicious. But remember, you got some dates in there and they always go to the bottom. So you gotta like get it kind of like this. Mm -hmm. This is when you could add granola or coconut flakes to the top of it. They'll sit on the top of your smoothie and then you eat it like a protein bowl. And this is where I get really desperate, like the last ditch effort where I want to get every last piece. Next we have the extremely delicious, often overpriced avocado. Let's dive in! So clearly you have to start with a ripe avocado, and if it's not ripe, just get the avocado and put it in a brown paper bag. Um, so, yep. Mm -hmm. First off, Get this part out of here. You have your avocado, you're gonna scrape this green stuff out, or you can just kind of smush it into the bowl. We've got our avocado in a bowl, and then we take a fork, and we, I'm just kidding. I mash it down until it's basically a paste. Okay, once you've mashed your avocado, you take your fork, and then, you, I'm just kidding, oh my god. See, and now we're getting to the limits of my cooking, because we've already done about two steps. Um, you're gonna take your salt, any kind of salt, just put salt in. This is the trick, though. Cayenne pepper, you know, like a little kick, a little spice. Boom, boom, boom. Now here's where you could use your bread. If you have a toaster, you could toast it. <laughs> what a revolutionary idea. I've been in my kind of Scandinavian phase, so I've been going with these hard breads. So this is pain croustillon, in other words, crusty bread, or Krogenvölker, which is probably German for like, we'll cut your mouth. This is kind of where price matters, because this is the cheap one. And then this one was like an extra euro more. In fact, I'm just gonna move this too. Ooh. <gasps> 
Ew! Oh my god. Oh my god. Did I, did I pour water on the crackers? <laughs> I, this is just actually how I am in the kitchen though. I'm like clumsy. And you, all you do, <laughs> just smear it on. Like that does not look bad. Ooh. And there we have our avocado toast. But now here's the thing with the crusty bread. It's <laughs> crusty. <laughs> Delicious. Very good. Now welcome back. You didn't go anywhere. I'm going to show you now the meal that I make every single day. And by that I mean it's the same ingredients, but you can do so much with them. Now we're gonna start with the quinoa, because it takes longest to make. Okay, so we're going to start with the quinoa, which means we need to boil water. Take your pot. I'm literally doing this as if it's me washing. So you're gonna take your pot, this is a pot, and you're gonna fill it up. <laughs> Everyone at home is like, I knew that when I was three years old. Fill your pot up to just, I don't know, like halfway. You're gonna put it on high heat and you're gonna cover it so it'll start boiling quicker. Here in Europe, they always use this, they're called bouillard, 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 water boilers. In the States, they're not that popular. People just boil water on the stove, but in Europe, they always use these bouillards. Booyah. Okay, the quinoa or the rice is the first thing you're gonna do because it takes the longest, right? And you're trying to have everything warm at the same time. Now, I like to go with the quinoa that comes with the sachet cuisson, the little like cooking baggies because you don't have to worry about ratios and you just throw it in and then it starts boiling and then it like fluffens up. I'm gonna show y'all. Don't worry, come on. We're gonna cook the sachet cuisson for six minutes, the quinoa baggies for six minutes slash maybe 10. Once that's done, we're gonna put it in some Tupperware. We will transfer the quinoa to the Tupperware, at which point we will put more oil in the pot and we will add either haricot rouge, red beans, kidney beans, or lentilles, lentils. We'll let that cook for a little bit. All the while, we are cooking in the skillet one of our fake meats with a little bit of oil. This is when the fire alarm tends to go off. So just as your water starts boiling, you're going to throw on your pack of quinoa. I probably shouldn't have done it like that. And then, do you recover it? Laissez cuire à feu vif for six minutes. So we just leave it like that for six minutes. Now, this is when things get serious. Roll up them sleeves, y'all. <laughs> Let's get in here. Now we're on time limit. Get that hummus out of the way. Get the beans out of the way. We gotta start with the meat. Which one do we wanna go with? Um, just for versatility, we're gonna go with the nuggets for now. Let's take that olive oil. I know there's a lot going on, everybody. We are going to put it in the skillet just a little bit, and we are going to put that on medium heat. Let's heat up that pan. See, now that's okay, but it'll cook quicker. It'll get more to the center if you just cut them in half. And it'll feel like there's more. Throw on some salt, because it feels right. Let that happen. Now, it is getting serious over here in the Damon Dominique kitchen. We have two things on the stove at the same time. Now, I don't want to brag, like I really don't want to brag, but this did happen without the help of a plastic bag. Now, I did do this and I just threw, oh, there's our time. In the meantime, uh, oh my God. So they say not to use a stainless steel fork on a pan like this, like a skillet like that, because you'll scratch the pan itself. Um, but I don't know like who's trying to like stab the pan. Like I think if you just got to go like this, it's kind of, it's like fine. Almost forgot you were there. I was getting too into cooking. Okay, so we're gonna put the nuggets in the bowl. Okay, we're gonna lower the heat on the skillet. Whoa, whoa, is that a tortilla? Yeah, we're gonna throw it in there. Leave it for a few seconds. Only a few seconds, cause it's gonna start burning. You just want it to be heated up. All right, oh shit, I forgot. Ow! Oh my god, ow! Ow. <laughs> You're gonna put it in the plate. You're going to, I'm gonna turn this down. I think she's done. Your tortilla and all the heat is off. The heat is off, the heat is off. Well now take your hummus, like, the disrespect that I did to myself. Throw it on the tortilla. We're gonna open the other hummus. 
throw on a few nuggets. A nice wrap. Whoa, things are getting a little chaotic. Okay, let's put it over here. Sorry for these camera angles, but we're gonna, oh shit, okay. We are just gonna do that. We're gonna throw it in here. Shit, hold on. Jesus, <laughs> seriously. Like, I swear I'm not doing this on purpose. Just getting a little flustered, guys. Okay. Now, back over here. Let's put some more oil in that pot. Okay. We're gonna do some beans. And uh, sometimes people pour out the liquid, but I kind of want to do like a soup, so I'm gonna just keep it in there. We're gonna try to make some like garlic. Oh wait, this isn't even on. Y'all are gonna take some garlic. So the reason I'm so flustered is not because I'm bad at cooking. It's because I'm trying to show you the three ways I cook this stuff. The same ingredients, three different ways. was this hard to open a plastic bag? I mean, with the quinoa, since it has basically no taste, I just kind of throw on everything. This is turmeric. Gonna throw on some garlic. Might as well throw on a little bit of cayenne. Whoa, I'm getting in the swing of things. While I'm cooking the third meal idea with the same ingredients, I'm gonna show you the first two. Number one. The first meal idea is the most simple one. You have your quinoa over here with all the spices. You have your chicken nuggets or whatever meat, but add in some hummus. Mm, and then that's your dipping sauce. You know, like, this is not bad, right? Remember, I only made one packet of nuggets. That's why there's like two on here. Now for the second meal idea. The creativity is rising, and now we threw on a tortilla. So same thing, just a tortilla form. See, I already ate some. Mm -hmm. Third meal idea. What? Okay, take that heat off. Done. We got some bean soup with some like nugget chunks. Bean soup with nugget chunks? Damn, it looks good. And obviously you can mix in magic, you can put the hummus in the bowl, or you can put the beans in the wrap. All right, so this next one, I don't know if you guys have ever done this before, but um, if you buy a bag of salad and then you put it in the bowl, and then you eat what's in the bowl. That's what salad is. Now here's where things get a little crazy because what I like to do here, take this bowl and I take the olive oil. Okay, the key is to get like just a little, little drizzle, como so. Throw on a dash of salt and there you go. How to turn something that was healthy into something that's not. But don't know if you ever thought about this, but if you add just a little bit of pesto. Okay, you just need a tiny bit because this is stuff that's powerful. Delicious. Okay, so a salad like this is what I tend to put on the side of all those very brown meals where they're lacking, clearly lacking vegetables. I tend to do this. Um, or I would cook something like asparagus, throw it in a skillet with some olive oil and pepper and salt. But last night I was like, who's trying to pay five euros 99 for a few stalks of asparagus? Right? Delicious yogurt. Now yogurt. See, this is why I can't do cooking shows because I don't have anything to say. Yo yogurt's good. Yogurt's smooth. Um, some people say it feels like it's something that's been half eaten. Um, coconut yogurt has a lot of fat, but it's good. And it's good fat because it's from coconuts. Like, you guys know what yogurt is. I think one of the keys to being satisfied with your meals is having the appropriate dishware. So this cup is obviously too big, which then makes you feel like your meal wasn't as like, I don't know, either satisfying or... I don't know, I'm just trying to make shit up so like I fill this segment up. I think the key to being... Top it off. Did my street become a trash dump or what? Now I like fruit, especially in tropical environments. I love to eat like a nice apple. <laughs> it's not even a tropical fruit. But when I'm in a big city, it's not my first instinct to like go grab a mango off the street. So what I do instead is grab some blueberries or bananas or strawberries or raspberries and top off my yogurt. Now the thing is though, I don't like mix them into the yogurt. I just like 
put them in there and then I like eat them off the top. <laughs> See now the tastes go well together, but I'm just not a fan of like when you like, come across a blueberry in the middle of your yogurt and then like squirts in your mouth. I'm just like, I didn't ask for that. Yo. Welcome back, AKA day two. It's time to make some more meals up in here and uh, maybe you notice something a little different. Um, this actually fell completely off because I, I've had this issue where a lot of these paintings just fall off at random times of the day and night. Um, <laughs> it is day two. It is day two and uh, we're gonna get into this thing, baby. It's more meals. It's day two, we gotta eat. <laughs> Still don't know how to do this. What up, YouTube? Okay, so it's day two and we're about to get in this thing. It's, it's day two, we gotta eat again. I don't know how to do cooking videos. We're about to throw down on some oat pancakes, banana oat pancakes with some rice milk. For this recipe, you need three ingredients. I don't do anything more than about three ingredients. So we have bananas. You're gonna use probably two. Instant oats, and they look like this. It's like a little oat powder. All right, and this time we're gonna use some rice milk um, only because I already drank all the oat milk. Which, by the way, one liter is just not enough for some of us. First thing you do, you take your bananas and you just throw them in there. <laughs> so right, most people would get an extra bowl for this to mix all the ingredients, but like, I don't really get what the point is because it's <laughs> like, just throw it in the pan, no? <laughs> okay. I guess like maybe if I had a view and like I get to like watch my children play in the backyard as I do my dishes, like there would be no issue. So you're gonna mash the bananas. And again, you might scratch your pan, but like, okay, so you scratch the pan. Like, I'm assuming if you scratch the pan a little too much, you would, like, get rid of the coating, and then everything would probably just start burning, right? Okay, mash the bananas till they look like baby food. And then you eat. No. <laughs> Playing. <Ugh. laughs> Next, you add the oats. There's no science to this. Don't know if this is the correct ratio. This ain't looking that bad. Like, I'm almost wondering what I need the rice milk for. Yeah, I don't think I needed that milk. All right, so here's your banana, what? All right, so here's your pancake mix. Medium meat. Do I, does somebody need help backing up or what? Damn. So this is currently where we're at. All right, this is the point though, where it goes from a pancake, to like you completely messing it up. I need like a butter spray. Come on, damn it, go. Get in there. You know what, that's fine, that's good enough. And here we have our vegan organic banana oat with like a little bit of rice milk, pancake chunks. Yo, this piece. So this is for somebody who has kind of like a sweet tooth in the morning, because it's all bananas. It's like gooey on the inside, but a little toasted crunch on the outside. This was three ingredients. Not quite looks like that. It truly couldn't be simpler than this, everybody. Make sure to wash your hands. You need to wash your hands for this one. The other ones you can get by with using a fork or spatula, but this one, you gotta use them dirty gremlin goblin fingers you got. What you need for tofu scramble? Yes, tofu scramble. This is what actually weaned me off of eggs. That was always my thing as a vegetarian. I'm like, but I like the taste of eggs. This is even better than scrambled eggs. So I don't really eat eggs much anymore. You need how many ingredients y'all? One, two, motherfucking three. <laughs> All right, you're gonna take the olive oil. You're gonna need a half of a chunk of tofu. And you're gonna need a lot of turmeric. You're gonna just pour your olive oil in the pan. Just to drizzle it in there. Turn up that heat. This is the fun part. I'm, you got to see this. See this with your own two eyes. All right, everyone, you're gonna take your just regular old tofu. It could be the most basic kind. That's what this is. You got your block like this. Just grab a piece, smush it with your fingers. <laughs> All right, let's get that salt going. Turmeric. It should look like tofu Cheetos. After you've let that marinate for a little bit, you're just gonna use that fork that everyone tells you not to use. You're trying to mash the big chunks. Mm -hmm. 
Damn, he's getting in the groove of things over here. All right, back up, back up. Give him a space. He wants to eat the tofu. Damn. Got that tofu talent. Tofu you scramble. <laughs> tofu scramble. Um, it's just turmeric, tofu, a little bit of salt, and olive oil. Yep. Delicious. Delicious. This is great. This is great. Like, delicious. Some of those meals, though, for real, like, they weren't that bad, right? Like, I know my cooking style, but if you just closed off this kitchen and didn't know how I cooked, like, some of those meals were okay. Some. Some, some of those. All right, head over to my Instagram and follow so you can vote on the poll for next week on what the video should be. Uh, leave your comments below what, what you have to say. I'm curious. Although, I already know what you're going to say because all my friends and family have been saying it for years. Damon, <laughs> that's not how you cook that. <laughs> all right, everybody. I'll see you next time. Be zoom. Later. <laughs> Those were a few recipes. I did have a few more, but then I realized that it was just pasta. And then I realized it was just soup. And then after that whole salad segment, <laughs> I was like, all right, they get the idea. You clicked on this video. It's supposed to be a dumbass guide to cooking. <laughs> Show look good to me. Like imagine getting your fruit intake by eating pancakes. Oh, yeah, and I don't, I, I guess I don't eat that with um, syrup. <laughs> I just eat it straight from the pan. If the avocado paste isn't doing it for you and you want something like a little bit more liquidy, you could throw in the olive oil, but then if you, like, have you ever looked at how much fat is actually in olive oil? It's a lot of fat. Like, these are all good fats, but, like, that's a lot of fat. Yes, if you caught onto my smoothies, I do have oat milk with oats. <laughs> And guess what? We're about to do it again. Okay, in the meantime, while this is happening, my rice almost flew in the sink. That's okay. I just wanted to say that I did something a normal person would do. I cooked rice as a normal person would cook rice, okay? And I used, I just poured all the rice in, boiling water. I left it for 18 minutes. That was the key. And then I took it out, put it all in a skillet. No, a uh, strainer. I took the rice out of the... Okay, I took the rice that was basically done. Okay, after 18 minutes, after 18 minutes, I took the rice out of the pot and I put it through the strainer. So I was left with the rice, right? Then I put it back in the pot to let it steam with the thing on, with the lid on for like 10 minutes. Jeez. Like, I'm smart in many areas, but this is not one of them. 